end of the tape, we had to put a new tape on. So to continue, um, what I wanted the PR board to do initially, and as I said, I, um, and we can add all the members of the PR board maybe at this, this time, I wanted them to, um, no, we won't add them at this time because we didn't form the PR board till later in the, in the following years. But I wanted the PR board each to do their own particular um, aspect. And the reason I'm tying it now is because this all relates to, to Bruce Akers because he was the eventually the chairman of the PR board. And because all these people worked with the media, all forms of the media, I wanted like one person to work with TV8, one TV5, one with the Cleveland Press, one with the Cleveland Painter. It seemed very logical because uh, they could take them out to lunch once every month or just bring them up to date and have a nice relationship. You know, you have to know people. Uh, as Cole Lewis said, people uh, do things for people because they work with them and they know them and they like them. Uh, and that's, had I not constantly been going up to Prudential and just build a nice relationship, we never would have had anything with Prudential. But, um, so Bruce, uh, and any time I would suggest that to the board, or to the individual people, they were all for it, and Bruce said, no, no, that's not the function of our, our, our board here, it's just to give you ideas for you to do, and I kept saying, look, I don't have a staff, it's Jacqueline and me, this is it. You know, we, we have to handle requests from, from local people, I have to go out and do seminars, I have to write materials, we have to do all these things, and yet he just could not understand that. We just not could see eye to eye, so to speak, but a nice man, but that's, I ended up, and they did have tel television coverage, I think on more than one channel, and this was a nice ad. And I said to him, Bruce, ex excuse me, Mr. Akers, later on I called him Bruce, but not at the beginning. I said, uh, for $500, you could not buy an ad this size in the paper, nor get TV coverage for Ameritrust. Unbelievable. Uh, June 15, 1981. This is a letter uh, from me to James Garge of the Parks and Recreation Department of Delaware, Ohio, and um, enclosed are the three citations to be presented on opening day, and um, the, the Parks and Rec and Quanians receive their citations that we sent out. We'll have to again show you the, the beautiful wooden plaque that we sent out at that time. Now this is one. I read this one. This goes with the other one before. Boy, this is going to be in such nice order now, I'll tell you. Okay, oh, and there's... No, we don't have to... This is... You know, the same picture. I don't know if you can see it or not. This was in a... Okay. This might be a little shiny on this side, but we put it in a little album that we showed for our publicity. Okay. This was uh, Friday, June 26, 1981, morning exchange. That's when we were on. I had to take uh, six kids, take three shirts, shirts, three small and three medium, and three extra large adults, and one set of puzzles, one set of posters, graduation certificates, and take keychains and buttons and coloring books. And then on the program, I explained what is safety town and safety tips for the day and what we did on the first day and second day and so forth and uh, explained the teenage role. And that was a, a fun time and morning exchange with Jan, Jan Jones and um, Fred Griffith. Uh, what, and then after we, we had a six minute um, segment where we actually put the kids through. We had the tarp and the little cars and houses and showed them how to do it. And we had Officer Low Rayburn from um, Beechwood, I'm sorry, from uh, Orange, who was our police officer and helped with talk with the children. And then after that, they had a commercial break, and then I sat on the sofa with both Jan Jones and Fred Griffith, and they had calling questions for me. And one was, you know, oh, diff different kinds of questions, but I talked about why safety education for young children, uh, getting parents involved and the importance of demonstration, getting children involved. Um, and I talked about some of the myths of Safety Town. What's the first thing you do before, I mean, not just Safety Town, but safety. What's the first thing you do before crossing the street? 
most people would say to look both ways. And of course it wasn't staff your sheet at the curb. Uh, so those are things that were there. Uh, very, very nice, very successful. Okay, this was on July 26, 1981. National Safety Town Center participated in this annual event sponsored by National City Bank for its employees. Festiv festivities took place at the University Circle. Employees and their families were able to tour the various museums and grounds surrounding the area and learn more about their health and safety. The center staff explained and demonstrated safety rules for the children and talked with the parents regarding the program and the importance of safety for kids. And this was down in 1981. Okay. And now Pamela Savansky was with us, and that's the one I thought went with me also to... Uh, our meetings with the Mayor Trust was Katie O'Toole, Jacqueline, Pamela, and myself. And um, I know that she used to get, she was had so much enthusiasm and such a positive person uh, regarding PR that she walked out of many of those meetings and said, I'm, I don't want to ever be a PR person like that. And I remember her saying that both with Bruce Akers and with Dick Atkinson when the first time she met him at Stouffer's, that he was very negative and very stiff and cold. And uh, so... Uh, it, it uh, I wasn't the only one that had that table feeling with him. But uh, he, we had a, a nice table display set up with the materials. And uh, then we had little games and things for the kids. Okay. Uh, now this, is, this event was sponsored by WKYC-TV and the Blue Cross Blue Shield at the Cleveland State University. The overall theme of the fair was Be Healthy and Live and Focus on Positive Health and Safety Habits presented in an educational but exciting manner. Clancy was featured for a 15-minute presentation of a safety magic show which incorporates various safety concepts into, into magic tricks. And that was also in the summer of 81. Actually, that was June 3rd through the 6th. That was a little before the other one. Okay, July 8th, 1981. This, these are just um, some of the full-page uh, full publicity that we received in, local, in the local newspapers. Um, well, let me, let's do this one first. Okay, this, this is the first one. This was done in... Um, yeah, no, sorry, let me go back to this. This was July 8th. This wasn't a full page, but it was a big, uh, about the, across the top, you'll see when we get the real size paper. In Twinsburg, Ohio, every session, and they operated many sessions, one, two, three, four, they always had a group picture of all the graduates of Safety Town. Every year, for many, many years. Okay. Now this one is August the 5th, 1981, and this was a full page in Lincoln Park, Michigan. I mean, you can see how tiny this is. It was a full, full, real big page. Not a little page, but a full big page. And this is included in one of our manuals. Okay, and I think we have, let me, let me show you here. Now, now this one is, um, I think, uh, there's another one that was a full page. You can see how tiny that was. And this was across the whole inside center section. You can see where it was folded. So it was the whole inside. You open the newspaper. Inside the center fold. That, we got the center fold. And this was in um, oh, my Murmur Calhoun. And that had to be down in um, Mohican area, Mohican Valley area of uh, Ohio. Okay. We used to receive a lot of, and still do, full-page publicity. Okay, this is August 13th, 1981, from Mr. Fulmer. Again, that corrugated forest industry about the cost-effectiveness of employees. Dorothy, I'm excited about your new concept of the mobile safety town. This is the tarp that we were talking about. It's an excellent idea and should help you enter the corporate safety market. Now, had we had one person probably do nothing except this, we could have made a lot of money early. And, of course, copywriting register, we would have probably had sole possession, but people always use little bits and pieces of it after copyright. 
But what I wanted to do is have the tarp, make the houses, the cars, get boxes, and send this out to corporate people for their safety day because they wanted this. This is why he contacted us and um, charged them. They were willing to pay. The paying wasn't any problem. This is, these were profit-making companies. Um, but again, it would have taken time to assemble everything, to coordinate the dates with the corporate, to get, make a nice little video, to send to these uh, corporations in advance so they have some idea of what it is. Uh, we'd have to give them a little training schedule of what to teach the kids. Um, and Frank and I would go out. Sometimes Frank would go with me, sometimes Jack, or sometimes I'd go to myself. I would drive, whether it's Indianapolis or whatever, and then help them set up, and then I would train the people. And, and I was doing it, and you just can't do all that. It was just... So we touched on so many markets, and that's why there's no doubt in my mind, no doubt whatsoever in my mind, that so much of what's being done in safety today and what's been done probably the last 10 years is a great deal, uh, a 99%, I would say, a spin-off of things that we did that I directly or indirectly did during the course of these 60s, 70s, and 80s. And the, re the reason I'm saying this, a lot of people have told me since then, like even the corporate people, what they did after talking with me or hearing me speak or whatever, that they would have a coloring book made for their company, for their safety, for their children, for their employees. They had all kinds of things to do. So I know, no, I know we planted that I, I personally planted the seed of safety for children in many, 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 many people's minds. Uh, some of them probably never remember. They probably were at a meeting and wrote down a note and went back home or, and back to their offices and, or schools or whatever and started thinking about it and doing something. And that, to me, was is very important. Okay. Uh, while we have not yet been able to implement a safety town in Detroit this summer, I am still enthusiastic about the pro project. As Larry is leaving to go to our Stanford offers, uh, office, please send all your information concerning the roll-up safety town to my attention. Con congratulations on your new marketing technique. We would like to use it to host our first annual safety town. Okay. I you don't know whatever happened to that. Never followed up. I don't know whether the company moved or changed or whatever. Uh, I think the reason I originally contacted him, mean, he was with Corrugated Forest Industries, and they made corrugated boxes. And that's, I originally contacted him for boxes for the houses and for the cars to transport. That's, I think, how we came about with that. That's a fundraising sheet I don't need. Now, this is interesting. This, um, I'm not sure what year we started this, but uh, people, remember I said people always wanted to know uh, how credible we were and, and uh, who did we work with and all that. So we put together that general response packet, and I don't know specifically what year we started that. I'll have to check. Uh, it'll be in our bi-monthly newsletters, I'm sure. I think that had to be somewhere, I would say, in the maybe... 76, 77. But every so many years, we would update them on our comments. Uh, we would have national comments. We had state comments, local comments, comments from uh, workshop attendees, and comments from parents. And this that started, I always use the first one here, was uh, the national comment was, let me see here. First national comment I had was 1974 was from Stan Fields, and it said, again, I have to tell you that you were a marvelous interviewee, giving these big town editors all they could handle and more. The pertinent information kept flowing, and I think we should get a lot of good mileage in publications across the country. Stan Fields, Fields Publicity Associates in New York, New York, and he was Sammy Davis Jr. PR company. Okay? And then we had... Uh, People after that, Beverly Roberts, Phil Worth from Prudential, Betty Ford from uh, the White House, Alan Bosch from Department of uh, Community Services of AFL-CIO, and uh, Honorable Ju Judge Judith Richards Hope, Leroy Dunn, General Duncan, General Motors, Tom Fish from uh, NC National Community Education, Vince Toffany, President of the National Safety Council, Joan Claybrook, uh, James Lipcomb of the George Gunn Foundation, 
uh, James Watson, Chicago, Illinois, the National Safety Council, uh, Henry Dow, the George Gunn Foundation, William Fuller of the corrugated place. So um, this was the, uh, they said different categories. This was national parents, local coordinators, and comments from teachers. And then I think we changed it to um, national, state, local, uh, seminar comments and parents, I think. So, but here, oh, here's the state officials. We have state officials here too, state workshop. So we, every, about every three or four years, Jack, you see this was, we, May 8th, 1981 was our last comment. So we must have uh, updated this, I would say, probably in August or September of 81. Okay. Uh, Okay, that's a nice big one. Okay, now here's a, um, uh, we did several mall promotions at uh, Rolling Acres Mall in Akron, Quaker Square, um, Pavilion Mall, Severance Center, lots of different malls with our little tarp. As I said, we could have done a lot of these around the country had we been able to package it in a nice way. This one says, Mall Promotion, Severance Center, Belden Village, Rolling Acres, and Summit Malls throughout Northeastern Ohio offer a mini safety time program for children of all ages. This program varies in length from 20 minutes to 90 minutes and serves as a refresher course for children who have attended Safety Town or an introductory to safety rules for children unable to attend the program. In addition, Clancy presents his safety magic show, this fun-filled half-hour presentation utilizes members from the audience and is enjoyed by all. And here is the little town that we set up with the tarp, and there's Clancy with the children doing a magic show. That, that was great. It was very, very nice, well received. And this one says, special magic show. This was on February 28, 1981. Magic has always fascinated kids of all ages. Clancy appears appeared in Higby's Auditorium Public Square and presented his special magic show for greater... Cleveland kids. His friend Patches the Clown made balloons, animals for the kids, cartoons were shown, and Clancy presented his safety magic show. By involving members from the audience in his safety-related magic tricks, Clancy teaches children about safety rules in a fun and entertaining manner. Through their interest in safety for kids, the East Ohio Gas Company, Solon Quick Print, Medusa Corporation, Fabric Centers of America, Ameritrust of Cleveland, and Hickby's purchase tickets for the underprivileged children of Metzenbaum Children's Center, Parmadale, Cleveland Welfare Department, and Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority, which is CMHA. Uh, we don't have a picture. Well, it's, we do. Yeah, here's, this is what, um, what we sent out, uh, the post of Saturday, February 28th. We sent this out in advance, and of course this was, this is this way in, in the, um, in our scrapbook, as you can see, okay? But um, again, what a difficult time we had in doing this because when we sent out the posters and sent out letters to the corporate people in Cleveland, a man from Hickby's, the Hickby company called me and said, we have your request for, the tickets were $3 each for adults and $2 for children, okay? There it is, $2 for, $2 for adults. Very little money, just enough to pay for Clancy. And he called me and he said, um, we received your request, but we don't see anywhere that you've been approved by the Greater Cleveland Growth Association um, Review Financial Review Committee. And I didn't know what he was talking about. So he said, well, you can't, you can't ask for any money in Greater Cleveland from any corporation until you've gone through that process. So I called. Bill Bryan of Greater Cleveland Growth Association, and yes, we had to go through that. So I met with Eileen Jensen, who was involved with that. We had to have a complete audit done, which cost almost, I don't know, two to three thousand dollars, something of this type. Uh, unbelievable! I just could not believe what we had to go through. Now I think this is something. This part is very important. I think it has to be included, and in, again, in our national uh, video, because um, if I'm going to call it good grief. All I want to do is help children about safety. I think I have to put in a lot of these types of things, how we were sidetracked 
with unnecessary things uh, simply to help kids. I think that's going to be a big, big part of selling book. Really underline this. I want this definitely in the video, in the final video. Okay. All right. Um, that we'll put over here. That's for later. Okay. This is um, one of many, and again, I have. Uh, I don't know how we'll show this. I'm sure Billy Anderson, when we put this video together nicely, we'll have them maybe all on the floor, all in a fan type thing. But in 1981, this was one of the proclamations that we received for National Safety Town Week, and this happened to be from the state of Alaska. Now remember, we talked about this before. We not only had to send the governor a copy of this, but it had to be requested by someone within the state. So we had to send all the material, a nice packet of information, to our directors within each state. And Mabel Fenimore was our director in Alaska. And she's the one that um, we put it all together in an envelope, put stamps on it, and then she just had to sign her name and send it from Alaska, from um, where she was in, in Wrangell to Juneau, I guess, is where the capital, what's the capital of? of Alaska. I'm not sure wherever he was. Okay. September 25th, 1981. This is from Henry Dahl. Uh, Dear Mrs. Schlad, thanks very much for including us at the National Safety Town Week breakfast. We appreciate the recognition which you gave our foundation in the form of a certific certificate of appreciation and also we're pleased to have a report on Safety Town's progress. As both Bill Bryant and Ed Richards said, you and your associates are, are to be commended for the very important contributions that you, are to, that you are making, both as an advocate for safety among our nation's children and also as an important ambassador for Cleveland. Your enthusiasm for Safety Town is infectious, and I'm sure that the growth of the program across the country can be directly attributed to your ongoing energy and commitment. Now that, I think, is very nice, and that, I think, has to be included in the national, um, because this is a man with the foundation that we had to work very hard. It's hard to get foundation people to approve of something. Thanks again for including us in such a nice event. Now, let me take a minute here and just, he talked about the National Safety Town Week breakfast in 1981. Okay. Now, what we did in 1981, now we've been having National Safety Town Week for a few years, but what we did in 1981, I kept thinking, you know, all these people, like in Cleveland now, we're starting to do a little bit of work for us, media people, and Henry Dow, and um, Bill Bryant, different people. Now, you, again, you have to keep a relationship going. You just have to. So I said, why don't we have an event, maybe a lunch or breakfast, where we could bring these people together and give them a certificate of appreciation, a uh, little thanks and so forth. And we did. So this is what we did in 19, first one we had, first National Safety Town Breakfast was in 1981. And uh, I'm going to put this on the side. This should not be in there. We'll move this here. Okay. Uh, again, we have to turn over backwards from the last to the first. And, and things are out of file again, but we'll find the right papers to work with. Okay. Here's what we sent out to all these people. You have been an avid child supporter, and your efforts in promoting our program and organization have been and are always have been our, and always will be appreciated. To publicly express our gratitude, we would like to present you with a certificate of appreciation at our National Safety Town Week breakfast, the 25th of September, the Midday Club at 8 a.m. We realize that your schedule is hectic and unpredictable. However, we sincerely hope that you can be in attendance at least for a few minutes to receive your certificate. Hope, hopefully Friday will be a quiet morning and will allow you to have your breakfast with us. Okay? And we sent this to a lot of people. And, in fact, I'm just seeing if I can find a nice copy. Should have a formal copy of a breakfast. We made up a program. You will see it here. If I can. Right, this looks like an all draft of a copy. But we had certificates of recipients this first year were Bruce Akers, Bill Bryant, Charles Byrne, 
James uh, Butcher, Honorable Frederick Coleman, uh, Campbell Elliott, Richard Evans, Dale Finley, Nancy Frank, James Griffith, uh, J. Warren Harris, Herb Hoppe, Emanuel Hewley, Eileen Jensen, Andy Cranach, Jim Slipscomb, Earl Lowe, Jack McCartney, Ruth Miller, Fred Pappenfuss, um, Judge August Pryatel, Tom Price, George Reed, Jerry Robbins, Dwayne Sales, Frank Stipkala, Herb Strawbridge, Wendell Turner, Charles Vanek, and Charles Sawatsky. Okay, then we also had here, I must have added uh, some more, Herb Cam, Tom Vale, Ruth Wirtz, Bill Flynn, Ed Servanak from TV stations, and Dave Buckle, Dan Keith, Chuck Sawatsky, John Rinaldi, Marge Banks, Alan Davis, and so forth and so on. So uh, we'll have a nice copy. Hopefully we have a nice copy in there for it. Okay, I don't know what that is. Envelope returned. Okay. Um, this is another one you were cordially invited. Uh, our seventh annual. Okay. And then we send thank you letters out to all the people for attending. Thank you for attending our National Safety Town Breakfast. Enclosed are three pictures we thought you might, or how many pictures they were involved, you'd like as a remembrance. Everyone has seen pictures one and marked the sincerity of your expressions. This was to Ed Richard. Ed Richard was um, director of public utilities and was Mayor Voinovich's right hand man. Very nice man. We made a checklist of the breakfast. There, we can hear some of our notes. I don't know how we ever made notes like this. Unbelievable. I wrote, take a black book, bring the White House letters, take the magazines, take national letters. So we had display set up, which you'll see. I hope we took some pictures. Uh, this was from Ed Richards, mayor of, uh, well, he's the director, but he came from the, it says mayor's office on top. Dear Dorothy, thank you for your kind letter of October 30th and the enclosed pictures. I agree with you regarding picture number one and uh, was pleased and honored to be a part of your meeting. I am very impressed by the National Safety Town Center and certainly am an advocate. Her poppy, of course, was their attorney, and, and all these people we sent. Uh, they sent me nice little, uh, nice little letters. A lot of these things are out of out of file because they were blown away. Okay, and this is the type of certificate, but it was a nice frame, of course. I gave them all glass frames. You'll see that later pictures. Okay, this was the guest list that we made. We, of course, sent the letters out and then made the uh, guest list and followed up. Now, here's the program. Remember I said everything had a binder on it? Okay, this is what it looked like. First annual National Safe Town Week Breakfast sponsored by National Safe Town Center. And then in there, National Safe Town Center, Ed Richards would present a proclamation he presented a proclamation to us for National Safety Town from, from the mayor. And then here's the menu. We had a copy of the menu. Oh, I can't get this off of here without pulling it out. Okay, well, we had listed the menu that we had and listed all the names of people who were receiving the awards. And then we had a picture on the back of Phil Cosby. Okay, can you see that all right? Okay. Okay, Oops. here they are. There's lots of them. <laughs> okay, you know, lots of them put together. But we did put the little black binder on them because we thought it'd be a little bit nicer. Okay, and these are all just thank you letters. These should be all. I'm not going to go back and fix them now. It's a long time ago. These are just we sent letters to people. Most of the people came were really, really delighted. The ones who did, we sent thank you letters for attending and sent copies of the pictures because we had a photographer there to take some pictures. And um, then the ones that did not attend, we sent their certificates through the mail. Okay? And here are some of the people. I'm not sure who some of these people are. We should have put the names at the time you think you're going to remember, but you don't. I'll send some of these. This is... Um, was one of the TV managers. I can't remember his name, but I know he was a TV manager. 
And some of these members, this was a, a representative from one of our Congress people. I don't know if it was Vanek or Model or who, but they did send representatives. And of course, this was a dear friend of ours, Andy Cranick. And he was involved for many, many years with us. Very nice man. And this is Mr. Henry Dahl. This is the man from the George Gunn Foundation who said all those nice things about me being a good ambassador for Cleveland. Okay, this is what our table looked, our tables look like. We put the program on the seat, which were black and red, and then we had the safety town stop sign with their name on it on each on the tables. Nicely done. And this was Ed Richards. These men, Mayor's right hand man, gave him a certificate. Oh, Joe. O. Earl Lowe, known as Earl Lowe, for Greater Cleveland Safety Council. Mr. Frank Stupkala, and he was a um, PR man for many years with the American Red Cross and Cleveland Chapter. Very nice. And this was Ed Richards giving me the proclamation for National Safety Town Week from Mayor Voinovich. And, oh, this is a sweet lady. Eileen Jensen helped me a great deal. Very, very nice lady and uh, from the, with the Growth Association. And this is Dan Keefe. He was with one of the TV stations in Cleveland, did some TV work for us, a lot of TV work. And Fred Pappenfuss, and this is the man who, back in the 70s, uh, mid-70s with the Veterans of Safety, when I had so many problems, stood up and stood up and really went to bat for me and then had to spend a year with me going through and doing all that review work, unfortunately. And this is Bill Grind. Uh, uh, really nice man. Um, helped me a great deal in many ways, but again, it always crossed my mind in the back of my mind why in the position that he was in as president of the Growth Association, he couldn't have gotten together some of the CEOs, just a few of them, even one maybe, of some of the big corporations in Cleveland and say, look, this is been proven successful. It's growing leaps and bounds. They need a financial sponsor. Um, I mean, he'd give me lists of, of uh, corporate people to contact. And as I said, if anybody came in from out of town, I'd call him and he'd have a luncheon with us and, and present him a, a pewter plate on behalf of Cleveland. And did so many nice things. And yet I'm saying to myself, and as many people that I took uh, and worked with me, like Pamela Saransky, uh, she picked that up very quickly, and other people that I took uh, meetings, different meetings with, with the Growth Association said, why doesn't he just pick up a phone and do this? And I don't know, but as I said, he was, uh, he was very nice. Nancy served on our PR board. Um, nice people, personally. They were involved in tennis, and we were involved in tennis. Never played tennis with them yet, but uh, we'd go to the tennis matches because they would watch Frank call the tennis lines when he, they played the big tournaments with John McEnroe and so forth. Okay, so there we have some nice pictures of National Safety Town Week Breakfast. And that was held every year thereafter, but the first year was 1981. Okay, uh, this is September 29th. This was from R Ralph Waltman, uh, Director of Administrative uh, uh, Services for the Stark County uh, School System. Very, very nice man, very concerned about safety. And uh, he was on our board. Um, he sent me a letter. Uh, Once again, your efforts should be commended and recognized for all the personal effort and time you committed to the program over the past years. Congratulations once again. I apologize for the absence of communication on my part, but reorganization, administrative structure, so many people had the problems and could constantly be uh, very active in, in all our meetings. But uh, I shall... Uh, hear from you in regard to the proposals. He submitted some proposals to me. Once again, congratulations on a job well done. Okay, and this is from, this should be in the National Safe Town Week Breakfast folder. We're getting it all organized here. November 30th, 1981. This is from William Lieberitz. Executive Assistant to the Superintendent for Community Relations in Salem, Oregon. Dear Dorothy, thank you very, thank you for your very nice letter of congratulations. 
There's a letter missing. <laughs> I was pleased to be elected president-elect of the National Association. Oh, he's, he was going to be president of the National Community Education Association, and that's when they sent him a letter. And I'm looking forward to the challenge of that office. I think very highly of your program, and I agree that Safety Town is community involvement. Community education and Safety Town are very are a very nice marriage, and I will do everything within my power to help spread the word nationally. As a matter of fact, if you send me some information about Safety Town, I would be more than happy to share that with the editor of our monthly newsletter so that we could get a feature story about the compatibility of Safety Town with community education. I will look forward to working with you in the future, and I appreciate your letter very much. Um, which we did. I sent him an information on, and it was put in the National Community Education Association um, newsletter. Now, unfortunately, there was a man in Salem, Oregon, by the name of Joel White, who, when we went out there and did seminars, he just, again, had an unusual way of thinking about things, and he could not understand why you had to support a national organization if you wanted to do the program. And you always had a lot of problems with that. So, because um, we had required materials like the certificates for the coloring book instead of a membership fee. And he just had a hard time understanding that. So I think it was in the, probably the early 90s, uh, he called me up and said, do they still have to be a member? They want to do their own program. Can they change the name of the program? That uh, it's costing a lot of money for them. And um, it, it just, it's uh, unfortunate, but, and I don't know, I'm, I, I don't know if Mr. William Lieberitz is still there as superintendent or whether that would, I don't know, I don't know the whole thing, I didn't. I got to the point where I was just going to work with the, the people who understood what we were doing, who wanted to be part of the registered, credit and certified program, and that said you can't. As Jim Griffith said, you're not going to ever get 100% of everybody. I used to, now, normally, in my early days, I would have called, I would have, well, you couldn't talk to Joel White. I tried, I spent hours and hours throughout the years trying to explain to him, and it just, you just can't do it. I couldn't do it. But I should have called probably William Liberitz and talked with him and explained and so forth. I don't know if it would have gotten anything. All I know is that the problem, and we don't even promote community education people anymore to sponsor the program, and I feel badly about that because I liked the philosophy of their community education thinking and our community involvement. I just thought it was a nice, is as Bill said, a nice marriage. And um, however, what they were doing is they were charging, and even the community educations like at Gross Point, New York, I mean, I'm sorry, Gross Point Woods in uh, outside of Detroit, Michigan, last year, which was 1997, I heard that they were charging $110 for registration fee. And another community nearby that's in community ed charging $85. And they said the reason for that is because it's with community education, they have to charge, uh, if they have to hire a secretary or have a secretary work on Safety Town for six months in, in registering and, and doing all that, uh, they have to charge six months salary. They have to charge six months of use of an, uh, a desk, six months of electricity in that room, six months if they're using a space that a 200 square footage, they have to write that off as uh, for safety town as part as of rent. I mean, it just got so technical. And but that's how you write work with grants uh, when you present grants and uh, uh, to the agent to even government agencies or foundations. You have to break that down. And we weren't used to that. And so we we just continued. Um, if if community education somewhere wants to sponsor, fine. But we have since gone with Kiwanians and civic organizations and have played down the community education. We've run into this a little bit with Parks and Rec, too, but not as much, but uh, to keep the cost down. Okay. Okay. Now this is November 1981 to Dorothy Schlad National Safety Town Center uh, is a member of the National Safety Council. And of course we would get these yearly. I don't know how we're going to put this in a category, but we'll, we'll get it there. This is October 29, 1981 from Jerome Paulson, MD, Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital. 
Dear Dorothy, thank you very much for thinking of me when you could not appear on the Dave Patterson show. I was able to work things out with the producer and did appear on the show. I think that things went well and I had ample opportunity to present the problems of motor vehicle uh, related deaths and injuries, the need for the use of safety belts and child restraints, and the importance of legislation in this area. My only regret is that I did not have an opportunity to mention the National Safety Town Center. Now, isn't that unfortunate? I mean, how can... I mean, I, I was going to appear on this show, on the Dave Patterson show on a TV program. I could not appear. I had a commitment uh, prior to that, and it was not a very large segment. And they really wanted somebody on safety belts because we were starting to pass uh, work on in Ohio safety belt, um, seat belts for children. So I asked Dr. Paulson because he was working very closely with Senator Lee Fisher who, who had proposed the legislation in Ohio. See, I did more than safety town work. I mean, I did more for legislative things. Uh, and I think here again, these are things that should be pointed out in that national video. Okay, but my point is, is that if somebody, if, if it had been reversed, if Jerome would have called me, if Dr. Paulson would have called me, been on, I think somehow in the very first 30 seconds or so of introduction, when I have a chance to talk, and that's how you have to learn how to get in what you want to say on any radio or television program real fast because you don't know when they're going to cut it is I would have said, you know, I'm delighted to be here today to talk about safety belts, uh, and I want to thank Jerome Paulson from the National Safety Town Center, but I would have gotten the name in at least, but he couldn't do that. But he was a very, very nice man, and I can see his concern, because his concern was really trying to get the legislation passed, and you only have so much time to do that with. So that uh, is how that went. Okay. Now, this is, again, our advisory board, and... Um, we added a, some new members, I believe. We had, uh, I'm not sure when, uh, we had Beverly Warfield, who was the wife of Paul Warfield from famous, Cleveland, famous Paul Brown, uh, Paul War, War, Warfield, rather, from the, from the Cleveland Browns, and who's in the Hall of Fame in, in Canton, but his wife was public relations director, and um, she um, uh, was on our board for a while while they were in Cleveland, and Jack McCartney was, I have letters from 98. I don't know when specifically they were elected to the board, but they were uh, appointed and elected to the board, but they were on the board during 81, I know that. Um, I, when we had Sammy, when we had Sammy, when he had Bill Cosby do our event for us in, in, um, at the Front Row Theater, Paul and Beverly Warfield were there, and they, of course we gave them front row seats as we did with Joe Vecchione and our top supporters. And I sent a note down to Bill Cosby while he was on stage in theater in the round that Paul Warfield was sitting in the front row and um, if he wanted to acknowledge him, uh, which he graciously did. He said that while he came from, now this is Bill Cosby speaking, he's on stage, he's doing his show for us, and he said, um, I just got a note, and he said, I recognize this, this person, but uh, this note uh, just reminded me to, uh, of a few things about this person. Even though I grew up in the Philadelphia area, and of course rooted for the Philadelphia Eagles and the, the, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers in my home state, he said, I always enjoyed watching this man. I uh, gave me many happy hours and so forth. And then he introduced and had Paul Warfield and his wife stand up, which I thought was very gracious of Bill to do that. Okay, so that was all the way through 1981. Now, you'll notice in 1981 I did not have the bi-monthly reports every two months because they're back in Cleveland. But we will put those in here, I promise. We're going to take a little break, have some lunch, and we'll come back from 1982, and we're well on our way. Okay, we're back again. Had to stop and have some lunch. Had my broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, mushrooms, and, and some black beans, and some bread. Good salad. Okay, if you recall when I ended, I said we were through 1981, and I didn't have the bi-monthly reports because they were back in Cleveland. Well, guess what? When I went into 1982, again, because the files weren't all up to date, 
somewhere in between 82, there were a few 81 bi-monthly reports. Not all of them, but again, <clears throat> we'll be able to splice this and put that in the appropriate place. That's why I give all the dates. <clears throat> this is the, <clears throat> excuse me, bi-monthly report for January and February of 1981. The special magic show, which was held at Higby's, uh, I showed you information in the nice posters about that. Okay, um, special thanks to Katie O'Toole, who distributed over 70 posters throughout Greater Cleveland. Okay. Um, Transportation Research Board's 50th annual meeting was held at the Sheridan Park in Shoreham Americana Hotels in Washington, D.C. from January 12th to the 16th. During four and a half days, 212 sessions plus 450 committees, subcommittees, and ad hoc meetings were held. Our president returned with a tremendous amount of information and thoroughly exhausted. The center is an associate member of this prestigious organization. <clears throat> Matrix International, uh, President James P. Wolpart and our president met in Austin, Texas for final discussion and signing of the contract. Discussions continued regarding establishing a safety town in South Dakota. Our president had a conversation with Robert Clark, the Highway Safety Director, uh, Renee Legal, the programs, uh, and Diane uh, Emmerich. Preliminary workshop plans got underway in January. These are the ones we usually held in April and May, but we started in January. Okay, then in February we had gold printed announcements with envelopes hand addressed in gold regarding the matrix um, announcement. Remember that nice announcement? Okay. Official unrolling of our tarp took place at the Pepper Pike, Ohio Service Building on February 25th, 1981. Now that's an important date because we talked about the tarp here and there. Okay, so that's February 25th, 1981 was the official unrolling of the tarp. And we did that at the service station in Pepper Pike, laid it down. It was on the gymnasium floor so we could stand on the stands around side and, and shoot pictures, uh, shoot down and taking pictures. And our appreciation to Officer Low Rayburn of Pepper Pike for making all the necessary arrangements and his wife Joyce and his son Sean uh, and Barbara Pickle, community, uh, Orange's Community Safety Director, Lee Gibbs and their son for participating and assisting with our promotional pictures. <clears throat> February 28th, our exciting special magic show was held and that's the one in Cleveland. And we had people uh, who bought tickets from, uh, I think I mentioned all of them, Ameritrust and all they were mentioned before. Okay, the spring workshop preparations continued. Fi final dates were finalized with the Holiday Inn. Flyers were printed and disseminated to our people. Okay. Now our coordinators in the news. Diane Eaton, <clears throat> our Southeastern Michigan coordinator, presented Safety Town at the State JC Winter Board. Conference on February 21st in Troy, Michigan. Lori Pachadas, our Central New York gal, visited Binghamton and gave a safety town presentation to an interested AAUW group. Efforts are underway to establish a safety town program in their community in 1982. Darlene Clifford, Central Western Michigan, attended a meeting in Mount Pleasant where she presented safety town to a very enthusiastic audience. Uh, Stuart Merrill will be the spark plug there. Thank you to Jim Beck, Lynn Schlad, Katie O'Toole, Barbara Brew, and Frank Schlad, who assisted at our special magic show. <clears throat> and we also extend, extend, extend thanks to Jackie Hurdlicka, who taped a 23-second PSA announcement with Joe Mayer of WJR, and uh, promoting this event, also Chuck Shadowski of WKJ, WJKW, Jan Jones, WWS, and Mona Scott, K WKYC, for their promotional assistance. <clears throat> Safety Town's in the spotlight. Racine, Wisconsin, Safety Town co-coordinator uh, co Cheryl and Bob Garrity are to be highly commended for the exciting day-by-day -day chairman's planning guide, which they submitted to the center on organizing and conducting their Safety Town program. This guide will be modified and be included in the center's new books scheduled for January 1, 1982. Fostoria, Ohio, is well underway for their opening day on June 15th, thanks to the efforts of a very dedicated, dynamic doer, Evelyn, Evelyn Hollinger. Uh, I had been to Fostoria to uh, make a presentation to their group uh, few, oh, a couple months prior, yes. <clears throat> great, great community. 
<clears throat> there was a wonderful restaurant they took me to. I thoroughly enjoyed the food. Oh, if I ever get there again, I'm going to look up that restaurant. I'll have to look up in my notes, but I'll find it. Okay. Um, Perrysville, Ohio is anticipating their opening day ceremonies for the Hillsdale Safety Town on June 8th. We extend our thanks to Bonnie Strong, Candy Fix, uh, for making their program possible. Now, here's the world safety news. I love these. I said that. I say that every time. I know. Uh, Great Dunfell, England. Uh, Great Dunfell Mountain in northern England is shrouded in fog for an average of 200 days a year and is to be the site of test for a fog elimination method developed by the Manchester University Institute of Science and Technology. In preliminary field tests, they have succeeded in dispersing fog by spraying it with electrically charged water droplets. That's very interesting. I wonder if they've ever thought of that in this country or in other countries to prevent accidents. <clears throat> Switzerland. Swiss vehicle owners are having weasel trouble. It seems the weasels are biting into car tires, and a natural history museum says it is po possible the smell of hot tires may be similar to the smell of a female weasel in mating condition. Aggressive fellows, aren't they? <laughs> USSR. Russian drivers are required by law to stop and render first aid to an accident victim, and first aid is a required part of Russian driver education. So is a medical checkup covering eyes, hearing, general health, and state of mind. Boy, and this is 1981. Okay, for those of you who saw the movie 10, <clears throat> starring Bo Derek. Uh, you, know, you know about the plush exotic resort, Las Hadas. Located 60 miles north of Acapulco on Mexico's Pacific coast, this jet set resort is simply too beautiful for mere words. Frank and Dorothy Schlad, me and my husband, had the opportunity to spend five delightful days here at a, as a result of Frank's consulting activities. The eight couples who were awarded this fabulous Mexican tour started with a four-day visit in Mexico City where they visited the floating gardens, the bullfights, museums, and the pyramids, then on to the breathtaking Las Hadas, where Frank and Dorothy relaxed on the beautiful sandy beaches of the Pacific coast, played tennis on sunken courts, and several rounds of golf on one of the most interesting and challenging golf courses in the world. Dining on their veranda and being serenaded by a mariachi band, they could gaze out over the picturesque courtyard with their bubbling fountain, lush foliage, and exotic birds. The exotic bougainvillea created a spectrum of color around the, the white buildings and beyond to the magnificent Pacific coast. When the leading magazine called it a better vision of heaven, it might have been an understatement. And that is, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, what a wonderful time we had there. Of course, I talked a lot of safety town to the groups that we were with. And um, it was so planned with activities because we were the guest of these uh, consulting people. So didn't have any time to, to go and talk to police departments or anything of that type. But what a wonderful, wonderful trip. Never, never would be able to afford it by ourselves. Okay. Okay. Um, we're talking about Frisbees now here, uh, how the people can use the uh, Frisbees. Nothing too exciting in there. Uh, in January, Dorothy, uh, in January of 1980, when I completed and submitted my fifth book on child safety, and the sixth book uh, was completed and submitted in February. Okay, I had to send my, they had contracted me for the first four, and um, that's in the, I think it was 1980-81, I'm not sure, early, early 80, maybe. But um, they were not, the first four were still in print. We didn't get those out until um, the next year. Okay, here we have <clears throat> a picture of Dr. Michael Ferrona, Frank Schlad, and Superintendent Phil Workman. Uh, Phil was superintendent of the Ohio Division, let me get the right title here. 
Uh, he was uh, superintendent of the Division of Safety and Hygiene for the Industrial Commission of Ohio. And this is on January 13, 1981. Our executive vice president, Frank Schled, was honored by the governor of the state of Ohio, James Rhodes. Frank was given a special governor's award for his efforts in promoting chemical safety through an annual chemical safety symposium, which he has organized and conducted for the past three years. The symposium has attracted national attention. This year, 250 attendees were representatives from throughout the country. Representing the governor on this occasion was Phil Workman, and he was the featured speaker. Of course, Phil also worked with me in Safety Town, so this is why a lot of these things work so well together for us. Uh, Frank is a member of the Faculty Department of Chemistry at the University of Akron, serves as a consultant, and is nationally recognized as an expert in laboratory design and chemical safety. Okay. So that was uh, some interesting information about us. And then we listed here the dates of our workshops uh, from May 14th. <coughs> Let's see, it was, uh, they were all over the place. But we had them in Illinois, one in Illinois, two in Michigan, two in Missouri, one in New Jersey, one, two, three, four, five in Ohio, one in Wisconsin. Uh, okay, and then in 19, uh, later on in the year, there was going to be a national conference on citizen involvement at uh, Yale University, New, Hanford, New Haven, Connecticut. Okay, so that was that one. Now, uh, we, that was what, they said January, February. We have, don't have March and April, and we don't have May and June, and we don't have July and August, but we have September and October. We'll add them in there. Okay, September, Rolling Acres Mall, I showed you some pictures of that, had a successful third annual Safety Town promotion, that was done, thing that was great. An added attraction this year was the appearance of Wendy from Wendy's Restaurant, who presented each child with a Safety Town puzzle, uh, which was Wendy's absorbed, a coupon for 12 ounce Frosty Dairy uh, dessert, and the graduation certificate. Our thanks to Patricia Williams, Promotion Director for all her organizational efforts, and Nancy Frank, uh, Nelson Stearns Advertising, rep uh, representing of Wendy's. So that was really, really nice. Okay. Teen Magazine. An article on our teen instructors was submitted, accepted, and will appear in the January issue. We extend... This is the January 1982 edition, okay, but we had to clear it in advance. We extend our appreciation to Marianne Bachman, feature editor, for her interest and all of her assistance in promoting the accomplishments of our teens. Special thanks to Kristen Ludwig, a four-year teen instructor from Mentor Safety Town who was interviewed by Marianne via telephone. Clancy participated at the photo sessions at Twinsburg, Ohio, for pictures to be used for future material. Thanks to all the kids and the parents for their outstanding cooperation. We took lots of pictures. Special thanks to Whip Kramer, director of Twinsburg Safety Town, for making all the arrangements. WWS TV5 and ABC affiliate in Cleveland aired the, the premiere of Auto Test. Jeff Maynard and William, Wilma Smith hosted the program, which was jam-packed with interesting safety and automobile information. We commend WWS for promoting safety. The National Safety Town Week and National Safety Town Week breakfast to his preparations are being made and information is on page six in here. We'll get to that in a minute. Highway Traffic Safety Division of National Safety Council has a new member, Dorothy Schlad. Douglas Ferguson, the National uh, Nationwide Insurance, serves as Vice President and Richard Tippy serves as Manager of the Division. <clears throat> Doug Ferguson, who was one of the nicest men uh, I went down to Columbus, uh, well, I met him when I was working for the State Department back in the 73, 72, 73, 74 era, and um, actually it was 73 and 74. But, um, and then after when I started my started the organization as National Safe Town Center, I went to Nationwide Insurance, and he tried so hard to get Nationwide to also get involved with it. This was before I even went to Prudential, I think. Um, yeah, and just couldn't, but he'd try to do anything possible for me uh, that he could. And Richard Tippy uh, from the National Safety Council is just, he's still there. I think he's vice president of the division now. I don't know what his specific title is, but uh, just very, very nice man. Always uh, interested in trying to help me as much as they could. 
within their limitations. Uh, always promoted anytime they introduced me or you know put articles in their news, uh, news their publication about Safety Town, things of that type. October, a funny thing happened on the way to the future. A fifth annual human service workshop uh, emphasizing the future of children, and that was a, a very interesting uh, um, seminar for, for a whole day we attended. Uh, was sponsored by the George Gunn Foundation. Dennis Eckhart, our the House of Representatives of uh, District 22, was there, and Virgil Brown, and a lot of important people. Okay, the National Association of Gun Re Governors Highway Safety Representatives, their annual conference was held in Hershey, PA, October 11th through the 17th. Due to commitments at the center, our representatives were only able to attend the opening day because we had seminars within the state of Pen Pennsylvania to do. Uh, National Safety Con Congress sponsored by the National Safety Council, October 19th through the 22nd. President Vincent Toffey gave a stimulating opening presentation in the Grand Ballroom of the Conrad Hilton. This five-day con Congress was jam-packed with information sessions. Our president attended meetings, the National Pedestrian Committee, Highway Traffic Safety Department, and Educational Resources, all of which she's a member, and also met with many national safety education corporate people and so forth. Halloween safety tips were filmed live at the home of Rhonda Wolfson. On October 28th, special thanks to Dale Solly, anchorman of TV8, for his interest in safety for kids and for Rhonda uh, and their children for participating. They called, I think someone from Dale Solly's office called um, like at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and said they were going to be there at 2 o'clock to film. And boy, we had to run around and find a place co close by and get some outfits for the kids and uh, do all that. But uh, we were delighted to do it because it helped promote safety. Okay, now this is coordinators in the no news. You notice we always have the same thing, the national, and then the coordinators and some world safety tidbits. Okay, same format all the time. So my thinking in this is people knew where it was in the newsletter. If they were corporate people and they didn't really care about the coordinators in the news, they didn't have to read it. They could read the national news and so forth. Always think, haven't said that for a while, have I? Okay. Uh, coordinators in the Helene Anger, Northeast Ohio coordinator, received her master's degree in learning disabilities in June of 1981 from Cleveland State University. What a sweetheart of a lady. She's just, just a doll. A sad farewell to Murmur Calhoun, who organized and conducted the Mohican Area Safety Town for the past five years. She's resigning her directorship to further her education. She has done a super job with Safety Town and promoting the program within her area. Murmur, you will be greatly missed in our safety town circle. We extend our best wishes. Pamela Cervansky, our community relations coordinator, was accepted as a member of the Public Relations Society of America, Greater Cleveland Chapter. Of course, we paid for her membership fee. Uh, Alan Conrad, North Central Ohio coordinator, was on the road again presenting safety town to community leaders in, La in Lakemore and Granville who are interested in starting the ball rolling to establish the program. You have to remember, he's the one I told you came in a suit and then took off his tie and took off his coat and took off his shirt and then had a nice National Safe Town Instructor shirt on by the end of, towards the end of his presentation. Um, very, uh, good, pres good presenter. He did a very good job. Okay, World Safety News. I won't say it. USA, a U.S. study compared the, the mentions of alcohol and drugs in popular songs. A substantial percentage of rock songs mentioned drugs generally as being either normal or desirable. By contrast, country music mentioned alcohol rather than drugs, and most often in ambivalent terms, showing it as evil and as an expected part of life. That's interesting. Peking, China. There are said to be 28 bicycles in Peking for every registered motor vehicle. Manchester, England. An inspection found a relatively new car to be without the required seat belts. The driver told police the car had broken down the previous week and he had cut them out to use them as tow ropes. <laughs> okay. Veld Riff, South Africa. The magazine Family Safety reports the case of a fisherman who was bitten by a shark on dry land. The well dressed fisherman has was dragging the supposedly dead shark by the tail 
when it tw twisted from his grasp and bit him in the leg. Okay. Great Britain. Less than half the drivers who take a test in Britain are able to pass first time. Many take it many take it too soon according to one examiner who noted that on average one failing test run in nine results in mandatory action by the examiner to avoid an accident. Michigan and USA, a service station's failure to notice serious defects in a truck's braking mechanism, mechanism when turning rear brake drums resulted in the station being held partly liable for a total of $375,000 damage award to two people whose automobile was struck when the truck's brakes failed. Okay, now we're missing a sheet here. Oh, I don't know what it is. We'll have to check from the original copies back in the office. Okay, I want to make sure, make a note of this. Uh, whoever my secretary will be that uh, in the future, make a note of this so we can add this in here. It says something about safety, something in that song. All right, 7th Annual National Safety Town Week, and here are some of the newspaper clippings that we reduced and put on, and here are the list of the governors. As I said, every year we try to present this in a different way. Remember one year we, we did it in the form of the stop sign and had all the governors' names. This time we put the stop sign there and put all the governors' names around. We always referred back to what we had done previously, so uh, that was very nice. Okay. And this is our National Safety Town, our first annual National Safety Town Week breakfast. Uh, this will go in there. Here's the names of all the people, the recipients. And then we had pictures of Ed Richards giving us a proclamation from the mayor. And then I presented, um, I think this is Ed Servanak from a television channel, his presentation, or his award. And, oh, I'm sorry, it was not Ed Cernak, it was Gary Ritchie, station manager of TV5. See if I would read these things first. I try to recall, my recall. And this is great. Here's a town of safety. Now, I haven't seen this for a while, so I have to read this. Residents of Safety Town received their diploma. You'll notice they're all wearing the Bill Cosby Safety Town graduation hats. Let's see where this is from. I'm going to have to read this very quickly. Uh, there is a new town in town that few people know exists. It's called Safety Town, and its residents consist primarily of young boys and girls, although there are a few adult residents. One of the, those adults is Officer Lloyd Junkin, the only police officer Safety Town has. Uh, Safety Town is located at Brookwood Elementary School in Hillsboro. So that this has to be... Oregon. I think it's Hillsborough, Oregon. Okay. And excellent. I don't even remember. I hope, wish we could find the original of that. That's great. This would be great. Uh, again, as a side project, what we, what I want to do is get some of these national things together, and if we get the good copies and send them to Bill Cosby and update him, uh, what we've done since 1976 with him. Okay, and again I showed you this picture and we put this in the newsletter of all the graduation, graduating classes from Twinsburg and then we reduced the full page ad, well, not ad, but the full page publicity that appeared in uh, one of the newspapers. Just We thought this would help encourage local communities when they got the newsletter and saw that, and we always said this was a full page ad. I keep calling it ad, I'm sorry, full page publicity. We, they didn't have to pay for it, it's, it's a freebie. Okay, now here's another one which we didn't have in the other place. Uh, yes, we do. This is the Murmur Calhoun, one concludes the fifth year. We had this one, I'm sorry. And then this is the one in Michigan. So we saw these all a little earlier. But we'll put them all together. Okay, and this was just... Uh, Charles M. Schwab's Ten Commands Regarding Work and Success. And we try to add a little, few little highlight things once in a while. Work hard. Hard work is the best investment a man can make. 
study hard, knowledge enables a man to work more intelligently and effectively and so forth. And in this little box, <laughs> we did a little cartoon type situation. You have to remember, this is when I probably worked, uh, not exaggerating, probably from 16 to probably uh, 18, 20 hours a day because I rarely got more than three to four hours of sleep a night. That was my schedule for many, many years when the girls were very small. I would put them to bed and spend a few hours with my husband. And then about 11 o'clock to 2, I would start writing books and doing any uh, catch up on reading and so forth. And then I would sleep from about 2 till about, oh, maybe 6 o'clock. And um, did that pretty much during the weekend. Maybe on, on the weekends, I would get maybe, uh, maybe one of the two days, maybe Saturday or Sunday, maybe get four or five hours sleep, but not more, more than that. But I have this in here. Um, bear with us a little longer. We are still working hard to unpack and get settled into our new offices. And appre we appreciate your patience and understanding with the delay of this report. And we had rush in, out, yesterday, today, sure, hurry, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, because that's in 1981, I think, is when we moved into, um, I think, the Beachwood offices. I think that's when we moved from Solon Beachwood. Not too sure about that. We'll check that. Okay, this is November, December bi-monthly report. Puzzle research was conducted at several nursery and kindergarten classes throughout Greater Cleveland. On an individual basis, children assembled new versions of our puzzle while being observed by Dorothy Schlatt and Pamela Saransky. The research included length of time required to completely assemble the puzzle and the coordination ability of different age children. Comments made by the children were also recorded. Uh, we had to, as I said before, figure out if it should be 12 pieces, 14 pieces, 16 pieces, 18 pieces, 20 pieces, and for what age group. There, did a lot of research. The Cleveland Plain Dealer has a daily profile page highlighting outstanding people. Our thanks to Frank Arman, whose interview of our president will appear in the December 6th issue, Ray uh, Majestic, the photographer, and Robert H Hagel, Hagley, assistant the publisher, for his recommendation. Terry Baxter, Assistant Vice President of the Government Employees Insurance Company. This is GEICO, which you hear about constantly on television, insurance company. Uh, was met at the Cleveland Airport by Dorothy Schlad, Jacqueline Herdlicka, and Pamela Savansky. And escorted to the National Safety Town Center, where we spent the entire day viewing the slide presentation and learning about the operation of our program and organization. Joe Mayer, WJW Radio gave on the air welcome to Mr. Baxter and commended him for his interest in Safety Town. I had called Joe and told him about what time he was coming in, what time he'd be in the office, and it happened to be the time Joe was on the air, and uh, so I had the tape record, I had the radio there, and while Terry Baxter and I were there, I kept an eye on the clock, and then I said, just a minute, Terry, I, I, this man was going to talk about Safety Town for a minute, and he welcomed Terry Baxter. It was, it was quite nice. You know. I thought it was nice. I, I would have liked to have been treated like that. William Bryan, president of the Greater Cleveland Growth Association, presented him with a pewter plate. We had a nice luncheon there. And um, Terry concluded this exciting day over relaxing dinner at the Holland House and a performance at the Cleveland Playhouse with, with Frank and I. In December, Westfield Companies again graciously agreed to print coloring books for Ohio safety towns. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Okay, I'm back. Answer the telephone. Okay. Today being Valentine's Day, as I mentioned before, or day before Valentine, Frank is out singing Valentine uh, songs with the quartet, and he called a little while ago, and they, the TV station was there and did, filmed about three of their jobs that they did, and it's going to be in the Sarasota Herald paper tomorrow with a picture, and also I had called some of the barber shoppers um, to watch it tonight on Channel 6 in the Sarasota cha uh, channel, and also about the paper. Okay, now, I noticed when I was holding these up that you could see the back of that, and it probably was distracting, so I'm going to try to hold it down this way and read it so you can concentrate on what I'm saying, not what that is. We'll get to that later. Okay, we talked about what we're going into December of 1981 with Westfield Companies. Again, graciously agreed to print our coloring books. Uh, I had taken Pamela Servansker down with me, we, and she met Mr. William McKee, 
the Vice President and Don Wilder, Executive Vice President, it was agreed that the Westville companies would absorb uh, printing costs of coloring books for our programs in Michigan and Illinois as well, since their insurance company went there. And of course, we were very grateful for them to do that. Cons Council of Smaller Enterprises, which is COSY, the Greater Cleveland Growth Association, which is the Greater Cleveland Chamber of Commerce, uh, is the largest chamber in the country. Okay, and they held their annual meeting December 15th at Swingles at Statler's. Uh, Frank and I attended. The COSY membership is, uh, was 3,800 in 1981. Uh, an increase of nearly 10% over 1980. And it's the largest organization of its kind in the country. I think it was one of the first and has grown tremendously and now is involved in, uh, I think there's a, a Council of Small Enterprises nationally, and I know there is. And Cleveland had a, a major part in, in uh, organizing that. But uh, NST extends best wishes to Mary Jane Fabish, uh, incoming chairman. Um, and, and Dennis Eckert was a very strong supporter when he was our congressman. Okay, National Safe Town Center's first annual Safety for Kids auction. We've got to get some money somehow. We're going to try to raise some money. has been scheduled for February 18th at the Cleveland Engineering. Uh, Bo Chadburn, I'm not, I don't remember her as a, as a volunteer, but she was there. And Pamela Savansky are combining their efforts in preparing an invitation and a letter that will be sent to major corporations and local businesses for donations. Public Relations Student Society of America, PRSSA, chapter of Kansas State University, has undertaken a project to outline promotional publicity activities for NSTC for a one-year period. Joe Vecchione, Prudential, recommended pursuing this avenue to assist us in informing corporations of, and the public of our program and organization. Um, I think, and I love public relation people, but some of these people spend so much time doing... Um, I would say needless work. Now here, and, and I can see Joe Vecchione's standpoint because he wanted to involve the younger people, uh, but to undertake a project to outline promotional publicity activities, um, somebody would have to work with them, I know Pamela had to work with them, and um, spend a lot of time telling them this is what we planned for the next year, and I guess what Joe had in mind is for this university chapter people. Now see this is difficult for me to understand because these are university people. They haven't been out in the marketplace. They don't really know, just like Pamela said, she, she could not believe day and night difference of what they taught her in school and what was out in the real world in PR. And she was an outstanding young woman at Ohio State in public relations. Uh, and yet he wanted these people to plan our promotional publicity activities for like a year for the next year. And um, while it's great to get ideas, I never, never want any to mis anyone to misunderstand me. You, you always want to get ideas from everyone because it might not be the direct idea, but you might pick out a one little part of the idea that might be a super, super promotion. Uh, but again, this is something that takes a lot of time. You need, need a lot of people for Prudential to do this fine. They have thousands of employees. And this was great, but for us to spend the time to do it, um, it was a waste of time as far as I was concerned. But inventory procedures and end of the year reports, of course, it was it's in no December, and uh, Brown Votes and, and Associates were accounting for them and did our inventory and all that. Oh, we did the inventory, they did the, all the other work. Okay, again, the same format, coordinators in the news. Greg Ripetti from Hoffman Estates, Parks and Rec, presented Safety Town to approximately 50 people on November 12th at the Illinois Parks and Recreation Conference. Uh, was a, the presentation was extremely well received and as u usual generated enthusiasm and interest in the program. Judy West, our Southwestern Ohio coordinator, continues to promote Safety Town and the importance of preschool early childhood safety education. Jack Allman, our North Carolina coordinator, gave a Safe Town presentation to interested community leaders in Pembroke. As a result, Detective Locklear of the Robeson County Sheriff's Department contacted the Center for Additional Information to establish a program in Pembroke. Ken Hale of the Optimist Club of Indianapolis and Director of Indianapolis Safety Town contacted the Center for Information to display a safety booth December 8th and 9th at the Governor's Youth Conference. 
Mabel Fenimore, Alaskan coordinator, made all the necessary arrangements for the presentation of the Rango Safety Town plaque. She had Julie Wig, the unit president of the American Legion Auxiliary, that's who sponsored him, accept the plaque on behalf of the Legion before 120 people at the annual Veterans Day dinner. See this? 100, uh, before 120 people at the American Day annual Veterans Day dinner. Um, it, this was just so fabulous that when we sent the plaques out, um, we gave them all the information that so many people and so many organizations benefited from excellent publicity. It's, uh, um, and you wonder when people say safety town, they think, oh, it just happened in their local community. But this is why it's so important this video has to get made so these people know uh, how much uh, we did at the center to, for the local people, okay? Uh, these plaques are presented to safety towns that are officially registered and credited and certified, okay? Uh, World Safety Notes. I won't say it. Moston, M-O-S-T-O-N, England. Two drivers stopped for speeding by the same police officer within a few minutes of each other were a Mr. Slow and a Mr. Speed. Now, that's funny. I don't know if, somebody, if these are real or if somebody made some of these up, but they, they're funny. Uh, Salem, Virginia, USA. A lawyer sat in his office awaiting a client who had been charged with impaired driving. There was a sudden crash. The door caved in, and the client in his automobile came to a halt in the middle of the lawyer's office. The report does not state whether the driver was again intoxicated, but readers may perhaps draw their own conclusions. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, at the request of Cleveland, we added a greater. I think we did this earlier in '81. I think that's the page that mi that's missing. We added greater Cleveland activities, and it says since our organization is headquartered in Cleveland, uh, the staff attends numerous functions and involved uh, with involved local and state officials, and they wanted uh, us to do things about Cleveland. Okay. So now these are things, remember we're an or, international organization, we're sending information all over the country, trying to help people set up safe towns, doing seminars, writing books, making new puzzles, doing all these things, and we're still working with Cleveland people on projects that aren't related to safety town, but because we wanted to them to know we were number one nice people, we're good people, we're honest people. Uh, we didn't have any motives other than to help kids learn, learn about safety, and we needed their cooperation, their services, and most of all, we were hoping to find a big godfather, uh, uh, you know, Donald Trump, Nelson Rockefeller, any of those. Couldn't find one. Cole Lewis and Prudential. Cole Lewis and Joe Vecchio and Prudential were the closest I came, but that's better than... you got to be thankful for that, I guess. Okay, Rapid Recovery, a program initiated in 1978 by Dwayne Sauls, was so successful it expanded to the entire Cleveland area and had now been changed to Cleanland, Ohio. The original program focused on corporations handling the upkeep of parcels of land along the rapid lines from the airport to Cleveland. The new program will expand its efforts to give a fresh look to various areas throughout Greater Cleveland. Holly Bearer serves as Executive Director of Cleanland, Ohio. Now, very quickly, let me tell you, Dwayne Sowles, the first time he came into Cleveland for a job interview from another state, he arrived at the airport and took the, air, uh, the rapid to Cleveland. By the time he got downtown Cleveland, it was, the rapids were so dirty, the line was just so dirty, trash and, and graffiti and things all along the, the rapid, uh, like the subway lines, but it was the rapid line. We called the transit rapid in Cleveland. Uh, that he got down. Down Cleveland turned around, went back, and never went for his interview. He was, it was so bad. So a few years later, they asked him to come back. Uh, some, another company, I guess, asked him to come back for an interview. Um, he came back and saw the same thing. This time he went for the interview, and he was so upset that nothing had been done about that trashy thing. So he accepted the job, and he really got involved. He is, uh, you mentioned public relations in Cleveland. And Dwayne Sales will always come up. He was always coming up with some great ideas. Helped me a great deal with some promotional events. Um, some you'll hear about in the future. And it was funny because I had met him and then I met Holly Bearer later. And I said to him, 
I said, Dwayne, and I said to both of them, Dwayne and Holly, after a couple of meetings with each of them, I said, you two are so much alike, and they were both, I think they were both divorced. I said, you two belong together. You two should really get together and get married. And they eventually did. Not too long after that, they got married. I don't know if they're still together or not. I don't think so, but um, th this was back in 1981. But really nice, nice people. And um, uh, Dwayne, as I said, is still very involved. Holly Bear went on to work with Ruth Miller uh, for um, uh, Tower City, the development of Tower City in Cleveland. So a lot of nice people, and as I said, uh, Bill Bryant once said to me when he saw the uh, list of people who attended my first annual Safety Town, National Safety Town Week breakfast, he said, Dorothy, this is like a who's who of people in Greater Cleveland. He said, you have all the biggies here. And it was, it was great. It was so great. I just am sorry that huh, I didn't know how to go about getting the money or whether it was um, what I did wrong. You know, I, I would have loved to have kept that momentum going because we could have been a huge, huge international organization, uh, probably bigger than the National Safety Council because we had more chapters. Uh, we had more programs and, and they had chapters. Of course, they were older, much older, but we were just on such a nice roll with it, of people. But we kept doing all these things, and as people said to me later, you know, we didn't do anything because you kept having these breakfasts and you kept doing this, and we just thought you had money. In fact, Jackie, one time when I took Jackie to a meeting in Washington, D.C., uh, she sat next to some people, and I'm sure she'd remember this, and they thought that her salary, they said it must be nice working for an organization that has a lot of money. And, of course, with Bill Cosby as our honorary chairman, as of 1976, people just assumed we had money, that he was giving us money, or some corporation through him was giving us money. We heard that many, many times. And as Jackie was sitting with these, with these people at a conference, um, and they were all men, uh, they, um, someone said to her, it must be nice as an executive secretary to be pulling down about $60,000 a year or something of that type. And nobody believed us. I mean, if you said, you know, on one hand, you didn't want to make, make your organization look like you were a mom and pop situation, which we actually were, but I knew enough being out in the business world that we didn't want to portray it at that time. Uh, as Sammy Davis Jr. once said, uh, he had to wait 20 years to say some things that he wanted to say earlier but couldn't do it at the time, you know. And that's what we had to do. We just couldn't say that we were penniless and all, we kept saying we didn't have the money to do things, but we kept going to conventions and writing these reports and people would re read where we were going and just so soon we had staff and funding and everything, even though we gave them our annual reports. Okay, <clears throat> Dr. Jerome Paulson, chairman of the Accident Prevention Committee, Ohio chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, appeared on a 30-minute segment of the Dave Patterson Show. There, oh, it's 30 minutes. Remember I mentioned this before? And yet, during the 30 minutes, he couldn't mention National Safe Town Center. I felt badly about that. Dorothy Schlag was scheduled to appear, uh, and, but relinquished her time to Dr. Paulson because of the extreme importance of child restraint bill at this time within Ohio. Nice, nice kid. Give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, Dorothy. Public Relations Society of America, Cleveland Chapter, held its 30th annual lunch on November 5th uh, at Emerson Press. All proceeds from the event. Uh, we'll go toward the new P PRSA uh, Greater Cleveland Scholarship Fund for public relations. Okay, uh, the man who did, I can't think of his name, uh, I'm sure it'll be in a future publication, that did this um, um, auction, did only two. He did PRSA and then he did ours. A very, very nice man. Uh, we, three of us attended the PRSA uh, auction the first time. I went for a couple of years. I went one year and I bought quite a bit of things. I did my Christmas shopping. And of course, I had money budgeted for Christmas shopping. So I kept bidding over and I, some of the people were upset with me that uh, I was bidding over everybody else. And uh, so I mentioned to Dick Atkinson, I said, is the purpose of the auction to raise money for scholarship funds or for the, the local for their own society people to, um, uh, as a reward for them to keep the prices down. Well, I mean, they had, you know, they had a beautiful Santa 
with, with you pushed the hands in and it talked. It said Merry Christmas it sang Jingle Bells. And it was going like for twenty, twenty five dollars. It was unbelievable. And somebody went to twenty five and I went to thirty, so I went to thirty thirty five, I think I went to forty and then I got it. But uh, I mean it was huge. You'd pay a hundred, two hundred dollars in the store for it. So they got, I think they were a little ticked at me so I didn't go anymore. Okay, that's okay. But I, I gave money to the scholarship fund for the for the kids to help with that. Greater Cleveland Safety Council Board of Control held their meeting on November 23rd. Dorothy Schlatt is a member of the board, and I attended, of course. B. Charles Ames, President Chief Executive Officer of Acme Cleveland Corporation, gave a presentation on basic management concepts during breakfast held December 8th at Cleveland Engineer Society. These were early morning meetings, like at 7.30 in downtown Cleveland. And Pamela and I attended this excellent presentation because I wanted anything on basic management concepts or anything with corporate uh, funding. I used to attend the COSY uh, president's meeting, and we'd all the presidents sit around and discuss different problems we have and different things uh, to deal with. Uh, I brain was like a sponge. I was every direction. This part was corporation. This part was educational. This part was fundraising. This part was marketing. <laughs> every part of my brain I tried to, to work. Okay, it's still probably it's a very small percentage of the brain that, that I've used. Okay, congratulations to Chuck Alexander for being selected one of 12 florists to decorate the White House. Um, this is the second year he had been invited to participate. And uh, also congratulations for his being selected float co coordinator for the Rose Parade. When I talked with him about that, he wanted to help somehow in getting us out there. We talked about this before uh, when we were at the National, uh, with the Highway Safety Foundation. We were going to be part of that, have that big round oval and then three layers and things. Just so many, so many things we could have done. Still could. We, if I ever win the lottery, because I don't have the energy now to work with, with corporate people. Uh, while we're talking about working with corporate people, I've got to tell you one fun thing. I don't remember, maybe this will come up later on in the years, and it was later. It had to be maybe in the 19, early 19, uh, maybe 1991, 92, something of that type. But we'll add this in there because it's so important. I don't want to forget it. I resubmitted a, uh, I don't know if I resubmitted or submitted a proposal. No, I resubmitted a proposal, I think, after Wendy Simon worked for me for one year. Uh, we got a grant for her. I got a grant from her from the Cleveland Foundation for one year. And I wanted to resubmit that. And I went down, I submitted it to, uh, I don't know which foundation, Cleveland or George Hennel, I have to look and see. But I sent it in, and then they called me and said, come in for an interview. Now, I go in for an interview, and I talk to a young lady from college, right out of college. And I prepared a nice packet, as you saw before, we prepared nice packets of information. Not too large, just enough information. And I said to her that I needed a coordinator for great, Greater Cleveland. That we're just getting some, you know, this is our headquarters. We, our uh, corporate people aren't getting proper information. The media is not being prepared properly. All this information. We wanted to work with Head Start people. Uh, inner city people, and just worked every aspect of greater Cleveland area. And I think the salary I was asking for was twelve or $15,000, very small, with a small, maybe a few thousand dollars for traveling expenses, okay? And I had listed like A through Z, you know, what this person would be doing, maybe not A through Z, but A through at least 15, 20 things that this person would be doing. So we, she went through and she looked at this. So help me, I'll never forget the terminology she used. She said, oh my, this is an awful lot for one person to do. And I said, yes, but I said, we, that's the way we work. We're a, volunt we're a volunteer nonprofit organization, and the person who's going to be in this position as a coordinator is going to be working with volunteers, so this will all be accomplished. Then, after saying that, and she knew I was the founder and the president, and that I wrote books, I did all this other thing, after just telling me this, her next sentence to me is, why can't you do, what is it that you do that you can't do this position? I about blew my stack. I said, I don't understand this. I mean, how can you ask me this? And I thought, Dorothy, 
I'm thinking to myself, don't blow it, don't blow this, you know, um, try to be nice. And while I'm talking, the back of my mind is, is working. So I left there, and I didn't even get, I think I got down to the, the uh, street level of the building, and I immediately called Bruce Akers, because Bruce Akers was on the committee um, with his foundation. And I called Bruce and I said, I just think I blew an interview with this lady. And I told him what, what, he, what she had said. And I said, so maybe you can call her and talk with her or whatever. But we never got the grant. But that's how these people, I'm dealing with people right out of college. And I love them. Believe me, we all have to go through that. But she's making a decision for our organization and then asked me such dumb questions. <clears throat> oh, got very, very frustrated. No wonder I used to take a lot of Edison. Okay, American Society of Safety Engineers held their annual meeting and a funded fellowship at the Christmas party on December 4th. And of course, Frank had several publications in that, um, several articles published in their publication. We were both members of American Society of Safety Engineers out of the international organization. The Radio TV Council of Greater Cleveland conducted their monthly meeting December 9th at the Midday Club. And Gib Shanley and Herb Score were there. Frank and I went uh, to the meeting and tried to get as much information and pass on to our people. Heights Chamber of Commerce, comprised of Cleveland Heights and all the, the Heights, University Heights and so forth, um, allowed our president and community relations coordinator to present Safety Town to its members since we were in the uh, Beachwood area now and Beachwood was part of the Heights Chamber. Uh, we wanted them to know we were a resident uh, in their community and explained to him, Herb Greenwald was the executive director and he and his wife Gloria were just very, very nice people. They've retired since then, but uh, did a lot to help promote any way possible. Okay, now we have here just the benefits of volunteering. We always try to give encouragement to our people here. And then another article on National Community Education Association uh, pub publishes an excellent monthly publication entitled Community Education Today. Below are three quotes that appeared in their publication that we would like to share with you. And let me just read one of them here for you. Um, what is it that keeps alive in some people the natural spark of curiosity, eagerness, hunger for life and experience, and how may we rekindle that spark when it flickers out? If we ever solve that problem, we will be at the threshold of a new era, not only in education, but in human experience. This was a quote by John W. Gardner, founder of Common Cause. Okay, just to give you some idea. Now, oh, here's a nice article. This is a large, this is one whole page of an article. You can see it's been reduced. We'll get the original size and show it. Billy Anderson will fix that up in the final video. Okay, the people page. This is uh, December 6, 1981. Her life centers on safety for children. Dorothy Schlad of Solon, founder of National Safety Town. Wish they'd always put safety, National Safety Town Center because people got that confused with Safety Town. But um, uh, it just gives a little bit, a little uh, information, uh, not a little, but it's a nice article. Tells just about my, how I got started and all that kind of thing. Okay. It says, however, Schlad dislikes calling herself a volunteer because she thinks it may cause some people to downgrade the project's professionalism. And that's what I was told in Washington. So, uh, um, tell us how we have to spend our own money. Okay. Okay. Very nice article. I like that article. I like the picture, too. Educational needs of a child, I had here love, acceptance, security, protection, independence, faith, guidance, control. Just uh, every child needs to know different things. Nice article. And uh, we'll talk about blind spots from the driver, American driver and traffic safety education. There's an article in there on that. Some of our publications were four or five pages, six pages long. Right turn on red increases accidents. This is when our right turn on red became Thing we had to inform our people about that, and we took that from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And then another article on injury cost from motor vehicles accidents, second only to cancer. Okay. Then we have here the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and driver ed uh, 
uh, jointly held a meeting. We had what what price was the traffic accidents, so forth. Okay, and then we had unfortunately <coughs> on December sixth, nineteen eighty one, Fred Standen, who was the um, safety town coordinator for many years in Fairview Park, uh, passed away. Um, and um, he was a very nice man. Uh, very, he loved children. <clears throat> but uh, and I'll t I'll make sure that I get this on the local safety town tape. Uh, he did not believe teachers should be involved. He thought it should be done by a police department. Fairview Park was sponsored by the police department. And now I'm saying this not, you know, to be nasty. I just as a fact so that people will know what I had to go through, even with my own people. Number one, Fred was one of these men, along with Frank Beck, um, and I'm trying to think of the other safety town people that felt safety town should be just traffic safety. Okay. Uh, even John Howard, for many years, still felt that way in Cleveland Heights. And any time I gave a seminar and talked other than traffic, they would get up and leave the room. And they told me afterwards, Dorothy, you're a nice gal. We'll sit and you know talk to you about lots of things. Fred used to. Fred and Frank would help at the registration table in the morning, register my people in, and, and just be very nice. But that was their beliefs. I could not get it through their heads that they were developing a safety attitude in these children. And not just on traffic, but I wanted them to prevent fires and, and poisons and playground accidents. They didn't understand that. That was, that was too much for them. Again, maybe being trained very technical in, in the police work, I don't know what it was. But anyway, to make a very long story short, I went out to his safety town one day. Went out to a couple of times. But out there one time, walked in the classroom, and he had one, there was one boy in one corner and a girl in another corner. And I said to him, you know, and the kids had been crying a little, their eyes were a little red. And I said, what happened? Did they have an argument or did they fight each other? What, you know, what, what was it? And he said, no, they don't know how to make their turn signals, and they're not going to ride in the car until they make their turn signals. And I said, you mean left turn, right turn, is they're making all these things? And he said, yes. I said, why, Fred? I said, they're not going to be out in the street driving. They shouldn't be out in the street. What what value do, do turn signals have? You know? And he said to me, Schlad, you know, don't make waves from his exact words. I'll never, never forget this. He said, Schlad, don't make waves for me. I have a few years left before retirement. He said, don't cause me any trouble. He said, please stay away from here. He said, you know, you and your psychology and fine. I'll go to workshops, but don't come here and make, cause me any trouble. Well, you know, I felt badly because this man worked all of his life. I didn't certainly want him to, I don't want to start any problems that he's going to be kicked off his job and lose his Social Security or lose his retirement or whatever. I mean, I just felt terrible. I just felt terrible. But on the same token, I felt so badly for those children. You know, and I said to him, again, I'll never forget it. You know, some of these things, I mean, are just like photographic in my mind. I said to him, Fred, look, I won't say anything. I promise you, you have my word for that. I won't say anything to the newspaper. I won't come here again. You know, I won't say a word about to anybody, you know, until after you retire. But I said, let me tell you something. These people here in Fairview Park talk to, to people in other communities, their friends, their relatives. I'm sure, because I know, I hear all the time at the center. Somebody went to, from Be uh, to Bedford Safety Town that used to go to Maple Heights. Maple Heights just taught traffic. Bedford ta Heights taught, uh, all, Bedford taught all Safety Town, all types of safety. How come? You know, I said, we hear it all the time from different communities. They compare. I said, they're going to compare, and after you retire, you're going to think you're going to retire, and people are going to always think of you as this wonderful, wonderful man that worked with kids. And they're going to find out you didn't give them a quality program. They're going to find out, maybe some of them know now, that you're not giving them a quality program, that you're not involving parents in here. And I could see why they didn't want any of the parents. And I saw that in a lot of, in a lot of safety towns where the police officers didn't want the parents involved. Uh, because some of the things that I saw just was I was furious with. But anyway, um, 
So that was the thing. So when I read about him passing away, I felt very badly. But um, as I said, you, you know, one I remember one middle of the night, I think I woke up when, and, and sat up in bed, and I almost thought of Denny Griswold. And I think that's when I decided, look, I've got to take a stand. I can't be the middle of the road. I either defend the kids and defend child safety as it should be, or I defend these people who've been doing it for years and say, hey, don't, you know, I want to retire, don't bother this. And from then on, and I, I don't remember what, but from then on I went. Another phone call. Okay, sorry for the interruption again. Another telephone call. That was a safety town call, Mary Beth Foxworth from Katy, Texas. She's the new coordinator, taking over for Charlie Hooper and hasn't been getting information, so uh, we've been sending it there, but it's been going to a post office box and that kind of information. So anyway, now let's finish on our December, no, oh yeah, December 1981 bi-monthly. Two brand new looks for 82. Safety for kids and tennis are a love affair. Love affair with tennis? How about that? And then Clancy, think safety t-shirts have a brand new look. Okay, boy, we had so many problems with those things. Okay, let me show you. I think I have. There, let me have this one. This was, oh, I don't have the back of it. Hold on, hold on. We have, we have it a little bit later. Okay, we'll show you the new tennis pen a little bit later. In 82 when it came out. This was just a preview. We had this in the back. Two brand new looks, the tennis pen. And the Clancy T-shirts. We're going to have new the, clan, the tennis pan. You'll ne never need to be at a loss for words again. What a great conversational item, plus being practical and functional. This tan and black pen is only a dollar twenty-five, and is refillable with standard pen refills. You can be the first in your community to explain and show off your racket. Isn't that cute? Said safety for kids and tennis. My love affair. Bill Cosby, honorary chairman. And this is National Safety Town Center. I'll tell you, we tried a lot of promotional things. I guess people didn't want to spend a dollar twenty-five cents for them, but um, it was a fundraiser. Just didn't go. Didn't have enough promotional things to it, I guess. Okay, Clancy T-shirts. Our new shirt, a uh, new manufacturer, suggested a bright sunshine yellow color. And they look great. The neck and armbands are the same color and same fabric, so we don't have those red. And they came out bright yellow, and everyone really liked them later on. Okay, now we're going to go 1982. I said that before, but now we're, go we're going with 1982. This was, um, remember somewhere in there in 81, it said about a teen magazine? There it is, Teens in the News. Okay, that was a magazine. There's a nice article. Right down there, teens, teens who teach. Okay, and then it was a continuation uh, right up in here, but that was the the publication it was in, Teens in the News, and um, said um, I, we love this. Is that crosswalks can be confusing to kids, but safety town teen instructors clear up the the misconceptions, so they know how to cross the street, step their feet first, and so forth. Any volunteer project that involves over 18,000 teens across the country has got to be something special, and that's just what National Safety Town is. They always would forget the center, but that's okay. Then I would say what Safety Town program is, and then and viewed this Kirsten Ludwig from Menor, and she gave her, her uh, feeling about working with the teens, and then they briefly mentioned my name, and. During my 20 years of travel, I've had the pleasure of meeting and talking and working with <clears throat> thousands of teens throughout the country. That's been one of my most enjoyable and rewarding experiences. I'm so very proud of these young people. I will always be so very proud of them. Um, says Ms. Cervansky, uh, we can't say enough about these teens. To them, Safety Town is an opportunity to form qualities that may determine them as future leaders. And Pam, as I said, was so concerned about um, utilizing uh, interns and volunteers for, for future training. Okay, so we had some nice publicity there. That's a nice publication. Okay, 
Uh, we talked about preparing for our auction. Here it is. To an auction to benefit safety for kids. Place Cleveland Engineering Society, Thursday, February 18th, 5 to 9 p.m. Okay, we had tickets to the Cleveland Ballet, original sculptures, gift certificates from Stouffer's, subscriptions to magazines, certificates for dinner, an autographed Cleveland Browns football from 1964. Tom Gooseby, who was at the University of Akron with Frank, and were, they were very good friends, went on fishing, fishing trips and different things together, played golf together. He donated his 1964 Cleveland Brown football, which was autographed. It was the only year Harrison Diller was a member of the team. And Harrison, all the autographs were on it, original autographs, not copies. It was a white football. All the autographs were on it, and including Harrison Dillard. And this first time that we held this auction, the highest bid we got for it was $100. And Tom said, don't sell it. He did not want, he said he thought we could get more for it. But to this, no matter, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to word this, but I will always be grateful to Tom Gooseby. To give up his own football to help us was just, um, I mean, I, I would never have done it, never have done it. The man who was there the first time and offered $100, and then we decided just to pull it at that time because we said we'd have it in another auction, you know, later, another year. He came back the following year, and I think he paid $200 for it. Uh, I think the bid went to 175 and he gave us $200 because that's what he, uh, he said he would have gone $200 for it. But even that's cheap. But you have to remember, this was 1982, okay? It would probably go for several thousand dollars today. But I'm glad he has it. It was a nice man that bought it. Oh, this is how it, oh, this makes much more sense. See how, how creative and clever we are? You're invited to an auction to benefit safety for kids. Oh, that was clever. Okay. <clears throat> We're in January of 1982 in the bi-monthly. Yay, all these. Well, this gives us just so much information of what we've done. Inventory and audit preparations were done. Okay, that has to be done all the time. First annual safety for kids auction. There it was. Okay, we had throughout the uh, through the efforts of and assistance of Joe Mayer uh, was announced on 8:50 a.m. radio, and uh, Ron Bolton, Cleveland Browns, was contacted to do a PSA and so forth. Thanks to Kevin Byrne, publicity director, Cleveland Browns, for his assistance in giving us some uh, information. And, uh, some programs and things of that type. Robeson County, North Carolina has begun initial plans to establish a safety town. Special t thanks to Detective Lockler for serving as a spark plug. I went down there, they flew me down there, and I talked to those people. What great southern hospitality. Um, very nice. Learned a lot about uh, that particular county as far as in the early days with the Indians and um, uh, different uh, political situations at the time. Very, very interesting. Had some great barbecues down there, too. Workshops, locations and dates, again, were selected. We always do that in January for our uh, April and May meetings. February, spirit specials. Uh, Joanne Finn met with our president to make final arrangements regarding our t-shirt. They were a new a new uh, company, Spirit Specialties, was her name of her company. She was, uh, I guess, the uh, representative, and she obtained the T-shirts to get to us in time. That took a little load off me that I didn't have to keep following up on the T-shirt manufacturer, because any time we went anywhere, we said, if anyone knows of a good T-shirt manufacturer, let me know, you know, that, and that's how she heard about us. Okay, <clears throat> first annual Safety for Kids auction uh, was held. Dave Teitelbaum, that was his name. He was the auctioneer. And um, we had uh, so many things donated. We didn't make very much money from the event. Uh, people just looked at it as a flea market, unfortunately. Okay, Belden Village Mall in North Canton held an extremely successful Clancy promotion on February 19th and 20th. Your friend Clancy entertained approximately 900 children and parents with five half-hour safety magic shows, and uh, 
Again, that was tied into one of our little TARP demonstrations. Exploratory meetings are being scheduled with shopping malls and corporations, officials regarding NST's TARP and portable safety town promotions. Remember, we talked about that before with John Fulmer. He wanted us to put this whole thing packaged together and, and uh, ship it around the country to malls and corporations. And uh, could have been a big, big money maker, but again, you have to pay somebody the money to do it. Final preparations for our workshop in February were, were uh, conducted. Uh, Dick Evans uh, helped us with printing our program. The auxiliary to the American Optometric Association uh, published, had a publication in Focus. They featured a front page article in, on the Bismarck Safety Town, North Carolina in the January issue. We extend our thanks to Nadine Sabergall, safety chairman, um, co-chairman, and she was also auxiliary to North Dakota Optometric Association. She was with Bismarck Safety Town. I don't know where that in focus is, but we'll find it. <clears throat> okay. Now we switched here. Remember I said we had to switch to our Greater Cleveland Activities. We put the National here, and then we went to the Greater Cleveland Activities. And then Greater Cleveland Sports Council, the Greater Cleveland Growth Association, and the Greater Cleveland Tennis Association have joined efforts to promote three major tournaments to be held in Cleveland this summer. Bill Bryant, president of Greater Cleveland Growth Association, asked Dorothy Schlatt to serve as chairman of the Women's Committee to help promote a kickoff reception to generate interest in tennis. Okay. Uh, I guess let's stop right there and talk a little bit about that before we continue on with the rest of these. Okay. Uh, Frank was the tennis coach at the University of Akron for many years. He was uh, a um, tennis umpire under the United States Tennis Association, so he called service lines for a lot of the biggies, John McEnroe and, and um, Jimmy Connors and, uh, oh, I can't remember all of them, but all the biggies on the tour. This was before he had diabetes, and he was known in Cleveland as having the best eyes on the service line. I mean, he was just great. I remember one time we were at the Cleveland Skating Club, and I can't remember what the tournament was, but John McEnroe was playing, and Frank always called it fault or you know, fault or, or safe or, or in, called it loud enough and very, very distinctly. And um, there was one call that, and Frank was very consistent because that's being a tennis player, he knew that that's what they wanted. If you're going to call them close all the time, they'll play that way. If you're going to call them out, you know, two inches, they're going to call, they'll play that way. And so Frank was very consistent. So uh, there was one call, I guess, that John McEnroe looked at Frank, and Frank didn't make a move. It just that's it. He called it loud. It was out, and it was an early part of the game. And for the rest of the game, John McEnroe never bothered Frank. Fine. Yeah. And afterwards, I got John McEnroe's autograph at a reception we had. But anyway, um, for this particular event, uh, tennis was being, you know, tennis was great in Cleveland, and it was just, the tournaments were falling down. Uh, we weren't getting the named players in. So um, Jackie Presser, Jr., was chairman of the Greater Cleveland Growth Association uh, Sports Council. And when they asked me to chair this, they said, We've, we want to have a kickoff reception is what I was in charge of. I want to have a kickoff reception and we want to have, we'd love to have 200 people there. I said, Bill, you will have 200 people there, okay? Now, I, <laughs> poor Jacqueline, uh, and myself, but poor Jacqueline, we call local tennis courts, local tennis establishments. Um, they didn't even know anything about this. Um, we said, could we have um, the names of other tennis associations? We'd get posters out. The Greater Cleveland Tennis Association didn't have any of this information. We had to compile this for them. We had to call the tennis pro at different clubs and find it. It was unbelievable. We spent weeks in doing this. Okay, I get a committee together. I get Pat Brownell, uh, who had known from Hickby's, and she was very involved in tennis and very, very involved. Uh, uh, she and Hank both, Brownell, were very involved in greater, all Greater Cleveland things, arts and everything. So we got her on the committee. I had uh, Dick Deshaunt, who was vice president uh, with the association. We had lots of people involved. And uh, 
So I started making all plans. The first time, though, let's get, let me backtrack here for a minute. First meeting we had was um, Mike Cargill was the um, a PR man. He had his own company. He was located at uh, Van Aken Boulevard. He met. Uh, it was in his office. He was there. I was there. Dick Deschamps was there. And I believe it was Dick Atkinson from from Stouffer's. And that will be, we'll finalize this in the reports that back in Cleveland, I have a whole big file on that. We sat around the table talking about these. And I remember who's there, myself, Mike Cargo, Dick Deschamps, and I think it was Dick Atkinson. We're talking about all these exciting things to do. And Mike Cargo said, you know, we, we have to send an invitation out that's going to be different. So he came up with what I thought was a great idea, cutting a tennis ball in half, putting it in a box, and being that, being the invitation, and I'll show you this because I have the invitation at home. We'll, we'll put this in here. Uh, and the other half, he wanted a number in the ball, and then we'd have a big paper mache, a tennis ball, 